Hi everybody, my name's Trez, I'm a project worker for Arts Care and today I'm going to show you how to make a lovely carp fish kite or like a windsock. So it's going to be like this and what you need is an A4 piece of paper and some plastic bags and you're going to need some glue and crayons and scissors and just the ordinary stuff. Now you can use any bit of scrap paper, it doesn't matter if they're writing on one side as long as it's um, empty on the other or it's white on the other. So here's my side of paper. I'm going to fold it in half and with a dark crayon I am going to draw a fish shape on this. So I'm going to go like this. Down here is going to be his his tail. These are going to be his um, scales. Okay. And I'm doing these dark first and then I'm going to colour them in. Now, the reason uh, this is a, a, a kite that's used in Japan, and the Japanese love to use this carp kite. It's a very special sacred fish to them because it swims against current and it shows great strength and resilience. And the Japanese, they like to use this uh, fish as a kite and hang it outside their door on a children's festival. And they like this fish because it's so strong and resilient and they want their children to sort of emulate these uh, qualities that the, the carp fish has. So what they do is they make um, large ones, you know, they make a, like a, a huge one for the, mate or the grandfather or the father in the house and a smaller one for the baby in the house and in between ones, you know, for the, the siblings and the, the brothers and sisters in the house. So they hang one for everybody in the house and they hang it outside and hope that it'll bring good luck to everybody who's there. So and everybody who's in the house. And we are going to put a tail on ours, like a, out of plastic bags. So let me see, oh yeah, so we're going to colour in the mouth like this. So you can just use ordinary crayons. If you want, you can blend them, you know, if you're maybe uh, P7 or up, you could blend them a bit. Let me see what other colours. So you do both sides of them, okay? So I'm going to finish doing this one here so as it matches. And this one is to do a fish kite, but you can really do any kind of kite basically out of the same materials. I like using crayons because you can blend crayons in, but you can use absolutely whatever you've got at home. You can use watercolours, you can use felt tips, you can use whatever you can. Now, that's my both sides done. If I want to hang this outside, I want it to be waterproof. Um, so I can cover it with tape. You don't have to do this, but if you want to, just cover it with tape. Ideally, you would laminate it, but if you don't have laminate and stuff, just use strips of sellotape. And that will make the, it protected from the rain. Okay, so there's my guy, all covered in sellotape. If we want to get fancy, I'm going to cut a little piece off here and maybe on the other side, just to give it a bit more of a fish shape. And I am going to stick these like, little extra bits in here as fins, okay? So I'm just going to use my glue, down here, and stick these down as fins. Yeah, this one we'll do here. Okay, so now, for the tail on the sky, tail comes along here. You can use just any old plastic bags, whatever colour, bin bags, whatever you've got. This guy was a yellow bin liner. So whatever you've got in the line of plastic bags, cut them up into strips and stick it down. Okay? Here's one here and it's got black bin bags, recycled bags, red bags, and I've just stuck it along on a strip on the inside. Now, we're going to stick the whole guy together. All along here, here, up the two sides, but not the front, okay? Because um, we want it to stay opened. So stick it like this, but you've got this open bit at the front for the mouth. Uh, this stage, make a hole with a hole punch. Now, if you don't have a hole punch, there's a way you can do it with blue tack and a pencil. When you push it down, be very careful. Push it down like this and push through like this and you'll make a hole. So once the glue's dried, I hope this glue has dried, use some of your extra, actually I'll do it on this other one because it's easier. 
Use some of your extra pieces of um, plastic. Here's one here. In your plastic bag and just stuff it. Okay, I'm going to push this down with a ruler or a pencil or something. Okay, so you'll be giving it a bit more substance and a bit more body. Take a piece of string and thread it up. Now, what the Japanese do when they're fe celebrating a children's festival is they hang these outside and it brings good luck to everyone who comes in and they have a whole range of them but they play with them as well and you're able to tell which way the wind is blowing. Now, if you can't, if you wanted to do a bigger one, you use a bigger sheet of paper. If you wanted to do one that wasn't just a fish shape, you know, it was just, it could be whatever you've got, really, a plastic bag. You could colour it up whenever you want. It's the basic same thing. It's a windsock, basically. A tube of paper brought round with plastic paper on the top of it. So when you've got them all done, you take them outside, you have fun, and you blow them about. And what I really need you to do, boys and girls, for me, I really want you to do it, is make them yourselves. Make yours as different as you possibly can. Do them with coloured paper, do them with magazine paper, whatever way you want. Take a photograph and send it in to us because we are dying to see what you do. I challenge you to make the most different fish that you possibly can and the most different windsock that you can with whatever materials you can find at home. And take a photograph of it and send it in to us because we would love to see it. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have